Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah ma ba'd. Quite often people ask whether it's on messaging platforms or whether it's just in the masjid. I've had this happen to me where people have come up and they've asked, what are these small symbols in the Qur'an? When I'm reciting the Qur'an, what do I do with these small symbols? Am I supposed to stop? Am I supposed to pronounce it? Am I supposed to carry on? What do we do with it? Now, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a Qari or anything like that, but some very simple, basic steps to understand these symbols and what they're about. Firstly, first and foremost, the ulama have said that it is makruh to write in the Qur'an. It's not a good idea for us to write in the Qur'an. However, the companions, they used to write symbols or tafsir on the margins. And then later on, at the time of the sort of these dots came in. You see, at the time of the companions, they didn't have dots and, you know, harakat, the vowels, fatha, dhamma, kasr, none of that existed. It all came after, but it was at the time of the salaf. Now, so for us to understand why these symbols are there, it's important for us to understand in a fiqhi sort of discussion that you are allowed to have symbols and uh, you know markings in the Qur'an if it helps the reciter from making mistakes, uh, pronouncing things correctly and as long as it doesn't interfere with the meaning so this is very important this says one nur and that's a sasad and a lam and an alif so if a person wants to say one nur as salah one nur as salah and they put the sad lam and alif together that's a mistake so now we can understand how the fiqh and uh, you know the ahkam of tajweed are now uh, aligning up with one another right these small symbols not every single one of them but most of them that we are going to cover today are connected to you stopping when you recite. And this is known as al-waqf with the ulama of uh, tajweed, waqf. Now waqf is of three or four types. The first type of waqf is al tirari Now this basically means, and this happens to every single one of us, you're reciting the Quran and you run out of breath, or you're reciting the Qur'an and somebody calls you, or you're reciting the Qur'an and you start coughing, or sneezing, or somebody gives you salam, or the name of the Messenger of Allah is mentioned, so you say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what do you do? You stop, for that reason. This is known as Al-Waqf Al-Tirari, you have no option but to stop. If I'm coughing, I can't recite Qur'an. Here's another fiqh discussion, uh, now that it comes to my mind. And this is very important. I see children do this all the time. If they yawn, if they cough, if they, I don't know, if perhaps they've got something in their mouth, are you allowed to recite the Qur'an, the ulama, as Imam al we know he's got a book uh, when it comes to the adab of the Qur'an. Al-Juri has a book also. They say, and this is narrated from the Salaf, that if a person is busy with his mouth, doing something other than the recitation of the Qur'an, then he should stop reciting the Qur'an. So if a person is yawning, he shouldn't recite the Qur'an. If a person is coughing, he shouldn't. Stop. And this is precisely what we're talking about. This is a waqf al tirari A stopping where you are forced to stop. So now, look at this first line from Surah Al-An'am. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeeb. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-arda wa ja'ala dhulumati wal-nur. I wanted to stop there. But say I didn't want to stop there. Say I was forced to stop there. This is now known as al waqf al So for example, Alhamdulillah, and then I start coughing. Say I've just said these two words here, Alhamdulillah, and I've stopped there. What do you do in that scenario? The ulama say you backtrack and you start again. Alhamdulillah, alladhi khalaqa samawati wa arda wa ja'ala dhulumati wa nur. Some of the teachers that I've seen have said you go back two words, but I don't think that's always the case. So for example, Alhamdulillah alladhi khalaqa and say you cough there or you sneeze there or something alladhi khalaqa that doesn't change the meaning so that you can see now why they have said you go back to Alhamdulillah alladhi khalaqa as-samawat cough there or whatever it might be you're interrupted alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal ard say you stop there khalaqa as-samawati wal ard wa ja'ala al-thulumati wal nur so they have said in the waqf al-tirari you are forced to stop then either you go back a couple of words and then you carry on or you start the sentence again uh, especially if it's a smaller sentence towards the end of the Quran 
The second type of, of waqf is al-waqf al-ikhtiyari. Now this is exactly what we are discussing here. The optional waqf. So here we've got a symbol. Alhamdulillah alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal arda wa ja'ala al-dhulumati wa nur Do I want to stop there? I can. Maybe I don't want to stop there. Wa ja'ala al-dhulumati wa nur thumma alladhina kafaru Sorry, I didn't say. Wa ja'ala al-dhulumati wa nur thumma alladhina kafaru bi rabbihim ya'dilun This is known as a waqf and this is what we are discussing here. Waqf al-ikhtiyari now in Waqf al ikhtiyari we have a few small symbols and this is the first one that we're going to take it looks like it says Sali or Salah Saad, Lam, Alif if you can see that there what does the Saad, Lam, Alif mean? now this symbol is being put here to say it is possible for you to stop but it is better for you to carry on so there's another one here. So let's look at it. هو الذي خلقكم من نطفة ثم قضى أجلا وأجل مسمى عنده ثم أنتم تمترون. See now you see I didn't stop. But if you wanted to stop you can. So let's see this. هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم قضى أجلا وأجل مسمى عنده. ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ تَمْتَرُونَ So now that Saad, Lam, Alif, you can stop if you wanted. That's the first symbol that we're doing. Now, this is not actually a symbol for stopping, where the cursor is right now. And this is now, I feel, I have seen, some people stopping or making a mistake there. That is not a stop. That is a type of mud. Now, we don't want to go into that separate ahkam of tajweed. But just to illustrate here, that is not a stopping. Here you would say, Indahu thumma antum tam. So now you are stretching, but slightly. You are not making it into a, a, a proper mud like this one where you were stretched for three or more. Thumma qada, like that. Here what you are doing is, Indahu thumma, Indahu thum. Here, if we take that while away, it will be Indahu. Indahu. But because we are continuing, and that's the wow is there in this scenario. So now you see there's a delicate stretch on the on the ha and the dhamma and the wow. So you're making it as if there's a wow there. This is the first symbol. Saad, Lam, Alif. Or it could be a ya. Yeah. Sometimes it has dots underneath it. There's another one there. Right, let's go to the next page. This is now, I remind you, it's Surah Al Imran. Uh, no, sorry, Al An'am. Uh, we've got a jim here. Walahu ma sakana fil layli wa nahar. Wahu wa sameeu al alim. What's that jim there for? Are we pronouncing the jim? Remember, these symbols are here. Not for you to pronounce them. They are there for you to understand that these are a place of waqf for you to stop. So here this jim basically means you are allowed to stop. And it's entirely up to you. Remember we did sali, this one here. You are allowed to stop but it's better to carry on. So here. قُلْ إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ أَوَّلَ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ But here, if I wanted to stop, I can. But because of this Saad, Lam, Alif, they are saying here, it's better for you to carry on. أَوَّلَ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ Or you can say, إِنِّي أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ أَوَّلَ مَنْ أَسْلَمْ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ but the jim is entirely up to you. This jim here, this small jim, is entirely up to you. So now, here we've got another wow here. So we're stretching slightly. So it's not walahu. We're not going to say walahu masakan. No, we have to stretch it slightly because that wow is there and it's giving off a small mud. Walahu masakan fil layli wa nahar. If you wanted to. Or walahu masakan fil layli wa nahar wa huwa samiul alim. The jim. You are allowed to stop. 
and you can carry on entirely up to you so here's another dream but it comes with a wow so that wow if you're carrying on you're going to stretch it if you are not going to carry on then you are not going to stretch it so or, may, so that's when we stopped. Or if we're carrying on. Okay? Right. So, so far we've done Sad, Lam, Alif. And we've done Jim. Now I'm looking for another symbol. To see if we've got another one. So here we've got Jim there, we've got Salam Alif there, we've got Salam, and these are there for you to practice, inshallah. Still on Surah Al An'am, and I believe that there's another symbol here. Small Mim. Are we pronouncing that small Mim? Are we going to say, Al Yasma'unam? No. There is another Mim, but that Mim often comes towards the bottom. I'm going to try to find one of them. For you in a moment but this meme here when you see it at the top it means you must stop and you carry on from here you must stop and when you stop here you carry on from there innama yastajibu alladheena yasma'oon وَالْمَوْتَ يَبْعَثُهُمُ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ That meme, you must stop. It's not a full stop, but you must stop. It's a place for you to stop. Now you might find certain reciters carrying on, and inshallah there's no harm in that. I know I've said you must stop. But if you are going to stop, you stop. And then you carry on from there. Not... إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ وَالْمَوْتَ That's completely wrong. So, you got two options with this small meme. إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ وَالْمَوْتَ يَبْعَثُهُمُ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ Or, إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ وَالْمَوْتَ يَبْعَثُهُمُ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ But what they are saying here with that meme, you should stop. So you will be you'll be stopping at the noon. Inna ismaun. That meme is not to be pronounced. It is a a place of stopping, right? So we've got sad lam alif. We've got jim, jim. You can stop here if you want. You can carry on if you want. So now here we've got a sukun. So here you don't really have an option but to stop. But if you are going to stop, you would breathe. Qala. You see that? I breathed. Or you can just carry on. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ قَالَ أَلَيْسَ هَذَا بِالْحَقِّ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ وَرَبِّنَا Or you can stop at these. Look here, you've got more than one gym. عَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ قَالَ أَلَيْسَ هَذَا بِالْحَقِّ So now you do the call color because you're stopping. قَالُوا بَلَىٰ وَرَبِّنَا Stop, stop, stop. Entirely up to you. Sad lam alif, better for you to carry on, but if you wanted to stop, absolutely fine. قَدْ خَصِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمُ السَّاعَةِ Sad lam alif, jim, small meme. Right, let's see if there's another symbol that we can cover, inshallah. I'm looking for the small meme underneath, because we've just done the meme on top. See if I'm sure there's one here in Surah Al Anam. Okay, so I found a small meme. But this small meme, like I said, normally it's at the bottom, but here we've got it at the top. And there's a, there again at the top. Now, let me just go back to the other small meme where we're talking about the meme for waqf. You will see that, that the meme for waqf, let me just zoom in a little bit more, it's clearly a meme. It's not a standing meme, it's clearly a meme which is stretched out towards the left. This meme here it is a standing meme if you can see that there. It's standing straight up. So that meme will be pronounced. So we've got Sadlam Alif, Sadlam, what do we do here? 
okay for you to stop better if you carry it on g entirely up to you if you want to stop carry on but this meme here it is being pronounced now sometimes this meme will come at the bottom if it is a kusra sounding meme here we have the meme again look here and you can see the difference there's the meme there there's a meme there. these two are to be pronounced this meme here is not to be pronounced this is for you to stop so now let's recite Possible for you to stop. Entirely up to you. I've stopped. I've decided to stop because there's a gym there. But you see that meme? Is pronounced because it is a standing meme. Now that meme can come at the top, it can come at the bottom. Here it's at the top because it's a fatah sounding sound. Wamam, wamam. Here you're stopping because it's a standing meme. So now we've done the memes. There's another symbol here, and this is similar to the wow that we did before. I remember seeing a wow, there's a wow there, and this is not a waqf sound. This is a normal, uh, you know, a mud sounding uh, symbol, but it's not the full mud. So now, it's not bihi. Bihi waman barag, so you're stretching a little bit, just like the wow here is joining to the dhamma. So he's ya'rifunahu kama ya'rifunahu. It's not going to be ya'rifunahu. Nahu. It's not nahu. There's a little bit of a wow there, so you're stretching it because of that mud. Right, so we've got how many symbols so far? We've done meme. We've done jim. We've done uh Qaf Lam Ya No we've not done Quli, we've done Sadi. Sad Lam Ya. Another one is Quli. Let me try and find the Quli. I'm sure there's one here somewhere. Okay, so still on Surah Al An'am, ayah number 71, we've got Quli. Now, what the Quli basically means is that you can carry on or you can stop, similar to Salih and Quli, but it is better for you to stop. Salih, remember we hear Salih, it is better for you to carry on. Sad Lam Alif or Sad Lam Ya, depends. I'm calling it Salih, but it could be Salah. It's fine. Or it could be qala or qali. Now here, it is better for you to stop. So the ayah is long, so I'm going to start from here. You see, now that wow has got mud on it. So you're going to stretch it more then. So you'll be doing lahu, because there's a mud. Ashabu yad'unahu ila al-hudatina. قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى وَأُمِرْنَا لِنُسِرِ So now here, this قَافْ لَامْ أَلِفْ You should stop. But if you wanted to carry on, you don't have to stop. Now this one is a bit different because here really it is a stopping sound because there's nothing for you to join it on to. But say if you wanted to connect it, let me see if there's another one on this page. Yeah, there's a قُلِي there. Okay, but there's no connecting there. So now here again, so now you could stop. Or you could just carry on. You see that? Even though we're not connecting it, you can still see that through the recitation that there is a difference. So you stop there. You see that? I breathe, I paused. Or, see that? In that second one, I did not stop. 
So this is now another symbol. I think our fifth symbol now. We've done Mim, then Jim, these are for stopping. We've done Qaf, Lam, Alif, and now we've done Saad, Lam, Alif. There's one last one, which is La. La, you see a La, Lam, Alif, La. And for this, I'm going to go to Surah and Nahl. This is a Nahl. And I'm going to go to Ayah number 32. And I've brought it here because there's another symbol here that I've been asked about previously. And I think needs clarification. 32. And there's a Lam Alif. Here. Now, uh, in the most of the I've got, there's a lam alif there. There's a lam alif there. So maybe if you refer back to the musaf that you've got, then you'll probably see that. Now that lam alif basically means you are not allowed to stop there and start there. You are not allowed to stop there and start there. You have to just carry on. الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين يقولون سلام عليكم ودخلوا الجنة بما كنتم تعملون. You are not allowed to stop this. الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين يقولون. That's wrong. You can't do that. It has to be a place where you are not allowed to stop. So when you see that, that's perhaps why in this Mus'haf it's not there because they've just omitted it for whatever reason. Uh, because, you know, if you read it, you read it like this, then you're just going to carry on anyway. But basically the Lam Alif mark is there to make it clear to you that you are not allowed to stop there and start there. If you, for example, like we said in the beginning, coughed, sneezed, replied to a salam, whatever it might be, and you stop there for whatever reason, start again from the beginning, Al-Ladina. Okay, so that's the next symbol. So now we've done Jim, we've done Meme, we've done Saad, Lam, Alif here. P possible for you to stop, better for you to carry on. Qaf, Lam, Alif, better for you to stop here. Look, you can see it here. وَمِنْ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ يُدِلُّونَ بِغَيْرِ وَمِنْ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ يُدِلُّونَ هُمْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Better for you to stop. Or you can carry on. وَمِنْ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ يُدِلُّونَ هُمْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ عَلَى سَاءَ مَا يَزِرُونَ The next symbol is not a waqf symbol. But I've been asked this question actually a couple of times. When you see this line, what does that mean? Now one person knew that it is a sajda. It says it there on the side. Sajda. But then another person asked, okay, I know it's a sajda, but where is the sajda? Is it at the line? So shall I stop here and do the sajda? Or where is it? You see this symbol here? That is the symbol for sajda. So although the line is there, which is emphasizing the place of sajda, but the sajda is here. And this is the place where the Messenger of Allah has placed the sajda for us. One last symbol, I know this has been lengthy and I thank you for bearing with me on this, but because we are talking about Wukuf, very important, and this is, uh, I mean we can even go to the first, I, I was going to pick this one from Surah Ma'ida, but I'll just take this one here from Surah al -Baqarah. very first page. Bismillah shaitan rajim bismillah man rahim alif lam mim thalik al-kitab la rayba fee now these three dots you find it in a handful of places in the Quran what do they mean? it means you can stop at either one of them but not both of them so so now you stop there and you carry on from fee or you can stop here and this is what you'll find probably a lot of reciters doing if you didn't want to stop at all, then you can not stop at all if you wanted. Let's see if we have a listening function. Yeah. 
hudan lil muttaqin okay, so that kind of a pause is probably not done by normal uh, while you're normally reciting the quran but you can see the emphasis by the sheikh dhalika al kitab la rayba fi hudan lil muttaqin so now you have an option to stop here or here but you can't stop at both you can't say dhalika al kitab la rayba fi hudan you can't do that it changes the meaning also so now we've got ذلك الكتاب لا ريب أو لا ريب فيه خد المتق. Okay. So these are the stopping places in the Quran. We've got ميم, and with ميم you should stop there. Uh, or if you're going to carry on, then you carry on, and you're not going to stop there. You basically don't make it into a new sentence. Either you recite all the way, or you stop there, but you do not stop. And start there. That's the meme. Lam similar to that. Lam is you are carrying on all the way. Not allowed for you to stop there. Sad lam alif or sad lam ya. It is okay for you to stop, but it is better for you to carry on. Qaf lam ya or qaf lam alif, maksura. This is the opposite. It is better for you to stop, but it is okay for you to carry on. Jim, entirely up to you, your choice. And then you've got these three dots here. And these are the symbols that we've looked at today when it comes to stopping in the Qur'an. And the positions that the person should stop when he is reciting. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us the people of the Qur'an. And that he puts the Qur'an in our hearts and in our actions, in our statements. And that he resurrects us with the people of the Quran, Yom Al Qiyamah. Hada, Wallahu Alam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad.